Solar Builders 2021 Solar Plus Storage Project of the Year is the Chub Key Microgrid at the Chub Key Resort, located in the Bahamas. The project required designing 4 megawatts of PV and 10 megawatt hours of battery storage to withstand the highly saline and hurricane-prone location 1,000 feet from the ocean. Here to tell us how they did it is Justin Cunningham, General Manager of Compass Power. So Justin, you are, uh, this project was based in the Bahamas and you are a Bahamian-based uh, solar EPC. So you're obviously used to island conditions in that area. Area. And yet this site posed some new challenges, it sounds like, for you. The project location is Chub Key Resort and Marina. Um, it's obviously located in Chub Key, which is one of the islands in the Barry Islands in the Bahamas. Chub themselves identified energy as, as probably their second largest cost. And, and organically, through speaking with the resort, you know, we we pioneered this concept of putting a an over 90% renewable microgrid into the resort and, and then basically just rely on diesel generation as a sort of tertiary backup. We did a lot of measuring, we did a lot of metering over several uh, months of, of uh, probably up to a year of development for this project and then uh, came up with the size of four megawatts of solar ground mounted uh, in a, an 8.5 acre array, total space was 10 acres. Uh, and a four megawatt, 10 megawatt hour battery storage. So some of the challenges that existed in, in working in a remote island with, you know, basically the only store on the island is a little ship's chandlery and, you know, serve some food and, and maybe your basic essentials if you're moving through on a boat, was a lot of the logistics and the planning and the preparation that went into engineering, designing, um, getting your full bill of materials together down to every nut, bolt, screw, you name it, all of the piping connections, all the EMT, um, as well as all the equipment that you're going to need. It's basically starting from scratch, developing out an island. Um, you have to be entirely self-sufficient when you get there. The, the island is serviced once a month by a vessel unless we choose to bring in a charter and and uh, it just requires a lot of planning to, to get out there and to build successfully and to the timeline. So when did you, when did all this actually start? Um, and, you know, before you even started construction? We started the concept with Chub Key in, in probably the end of 2018, actually. Um, it took about a year of, of sizing and, and measurement and, and basically the sales side of the program in order to convince them to buy off, in order to demonstrate the paybacks for them are appropriate and all that kind of good stuff. After which, you know, upon receiving the go ahead, um, the legislation in the Bahamas wasn't entirely set on, on how a, a project like this could be approved. So we, we had to come to the table with Chub Key, ourselves, Compass, and obviously all the stakeholders from a governmental perspective in order to get this approval. So that took us through probably to May of 2019 um, when we received the, the go ahead to start placing orders. And then, you know, we had probably a seven month procurement timeline project itself started in, in March of 2021. So based off of uh, what you, you know, the research you had done, and now maybe the results that the resort is seeing, what are the savings that you mapped out? And that's probably a lot of what took place in the first year. They didn't have real true metering of what the resort loads were. They were just checking a generator or checking two generators and, and adding them together. Part of the program was to undertake a real study of, as to where the power is going, um, how it's consumed, the timeline in which it's consumed and, and match that up against the irradiance of the sun and, and how, uh, how the day uh, would progress of a PV field versus the resort operations. Now that this has been in place and it's been successful, do you think it will have an impact on how the region itself views projects like this or maybe incentivizes them? Yeah, we're, we're really trying to, to show that it's, it's something that can last in this uh, environment, in this area. And, you know, we're, we're striving for less than 10% of the diesel consumption that it was, probably closer to the 5 to 7% range. Uh, depending on how busy the resort's, uh, you know, tourist season is. You know, we're striving for some of the higher wind ratings that have probably been seen in our region for both the PV field and the battery. Uh, we're striving for higher levels of galvanization on the racking. 
uh, using all stainless steel equipment to, for the through bolting of the panels. Uh, we did a lot of work um, and closely followed the Rocky Mountain Institute's solar under storm uh, after Irma and, and Maria went through and the recommendations that they put out in their publications. So, and like you said, hopefully a lot of the other resorts, not only in the Bahamas, but throughout the rest of the Caribbean, see it and catch on to it. The other uh, really cool thing about this uh, is most of the construction and uh, the labor was locally sourced, correct? Compass in, in, in various forms through different divisions has been around uh, in the Bahamas since 2004. We've probably, you know, attained the 80 to 85 megawatt of installed capacity mark. Um, recently transitioning over to the solar industry or to the renewable side with changes in the legislation and the infrastructure allowing it to go that way. Yeah, our, our, our crew of, of sort of 65 guys, um, our electricians, our mechanical people would have never put something of this magnitude together before. So um, supplemented with some very good engineering and project management um, from Asante Energy, uh, the Compass team, built this from start to finish. And I, I was hoping uh, you could run down some of the key partners and suppliers that you uh, used to make this happen. You know, I know TerraSmart ground screws and racking were used and had to be customized a bit for the, you know, hurricane force wind possibilities there. And same for the, the storage units. Compass went through a preliminary engineering phase where we sized system layout, um, the format, basically the the high level single line, uh, the interconnection strategy between you know the existing equipment and um, and and the new equipment that's going in there. Then we pulled in Asante Energy for engineering and, and sort of project management to help us verify, build out, and and really fill out the bill of materials and the and the detailed engineering. After that. You know, obviously, the next the next thing you look at is is your battery storage systems and your microgrid controllers as the high level architecture to put put it all together. Um, that's where Hitachi ABB Energy came in. Um, they have done a wonderful job uh, getting this system to where it is right now. Uh, we collaborated with Trina TerraSmart and ourselves in order to make sure that we had the uplift ratings to reach 185 miles per hour sustained, 213 gusting. And then uh, TerraSmart did a wonderful job uh, co collaborating with us on, as you said before, earth testing, um, the entire field was backfilled and leveled uh, from Phil from another side of the island uh, that actually helped form part of an, an additional marina basin um, because of the saline environment and because of the environment where we pulled the soil from or the, the olithic limestone from. With its compaction, there was a lot of studying done. We ended up coming up with a G235 galvanized coating, um, TerraSmart put that on the screws, put that on the uprights, put that on all the racking, and then all the bolting, as I mentioned before, was stainless steel. So the collaboration with them was was really a well-executed and, and good experience, and I'd highly recommend them to anybody looking to build. Well, hey, Justin, uh, just again, uh, congrats. I'm glad that this was the uh, project our readers uh, put their support behind. It's uh, pretty cool to a, a PV plus storage system of this size uh, and in such difficult conditions kind of come together and maybe, you know, influence where, you know, the energy sourcing for this island uh, comes from, from here on out. So thanks for taking the time to chat with us about it. Chris, uh, many thanks to yourself and, and the entire team at Solar Builder uh, Magazine and look forward to uh, hearing from you guys again in the future.